but um, the one I used to do that technique, and uh, I feel that the single portal technique is much more. Uh, it's uh, for me, it's a better approach. It's just that's again a personal preference. Okay. Um, the next question states: I sleep with splints. This question is for Dr. Gerard. The amount of discomfort has varied over the years, but doesn't seem extreme enough to warrant surgery. How do I know if I have or am creating permanent damage? Uh, well, I think you need a, a pretty good medical evaluation. Um, you can tell it clinically s to some extent, uh, but also it's helpful to get some of those nerve conduction studies. Had them, okay. And th looking at those absolute numbers, sometimes that can give you an idea of whether or not you're getting into problems with irreversible damage, if those numbers are getting too, too high. So I think that's an important um, uh, prognostic factor, those nerve conduction studies. This question would be for Jeannie. Any specific recommendations for effective foods to be eaten? I would have to say that I would need to get with a nutritionist on that and get back to whoever it was because I don't know the answer to that. Okay. Um, actually, there's another question that kind of goes along that asking about B1. Is that effective? Uh, B1, well, again, people that have B1 deficiencies can get into nerve problems, uh, uh, thiamine deficiencies. Um, but B6 has been the one that's been touted recently as a treatment, uh, a um, alternative medical treatment. And we, I talked about that during my talk. It, it's helpful if you have a B6 deficiency, but most people have a decent diet, don't have B6 deficiencies. So would you recommend it taking B6? Uh, as long as you take it in... Uh, uh, Small. Mo and moderate doses and not excessive doses, there's no downside. It's a water-soluble vitamin. It doesn't have any real negative uh, effect as long as you're taking in less than or 100 milligrams a day or less. Okay, thank you. This question is for Jeannie. Uh, the person wrote, I don't feel pain in my yoga class. Could I still be doing harm? My hands are weight-bearing in class. We have an active group. <laughs> Golf, yoga. Well, I think pain is a good indicator and you should always listen to your body and if you're having pain you should stop doing whatever activity it is that's causing the pain. Um, if that's a, if if you are weight bearing safely in a basically neutral position you shouldn't be harming yourself. That's the position. I'm not sure that's a real safe position. Um, again you're putting you're decreasing the space in the carpal tunnel. So, uh, I, you know, people ask me when they have arthritis, should I go bowling? <laughs> I say, no, don't go bowling. If, if, you know, so you have to, even though it's an enjoyable activity and it may feel good at the time, you're, you want to decrease the amount of stress that you're putting on those structures cumulatively over your day. And even if it's not hurting you right when you're doing it, if you look at the position, it really is compressing the carpal tunnel, so I would advise against that. Our last question for the evening, because it's almost 8 o'clock, is do over-the-counter creams work that are not prescription for Dr. Gerard? Um, well, the, the only creams I know about that people have been using is Zostrix cream, which is a capsaicin, which is a um, derivative of a pepper. And um, I, what it's supposed to do is increase the blood flow to the area. Um, I really don't have much experience with using it because I don't prescribe it, but I've anecdotally have heard uh, pluses and minuses, so I can't really give you a good answer on that. Uh, you can get a traumatic carpal tunnel from an injury, sure. Yes, sir. Dupatrins. Yeah, it's unrelated to carpal tunnel, but 10% of people that have Dupuytrens get carpal tunnel, which is interesting. But it's a contracture uh, that co is caused by some thickening of the, the layer below the skin, the palmar fascia. And it can actually bring the finger down uh, in this uh, position from that unyielding contracture. But 10% of people that get Dupuytrens disease uh, have carpal tunnel syndrome, which is interesting. And it's uh, only important from a surgical point of view. You don't want to... Uh, do the Dupuytren surgery and the carpal tunnel surgery at the same time because the prognosis is adversely affected by doing them at the same time. Okay. Well, one more question, and that's from the lady with the 